There's going to be a party in Mexico tonight. Daniel Suarez is officially a NASCAR Cup Series winner. Hey guys, I just got done watching the NASCAR Cup Series race at Sonoma Raceway and we had everything from engine explosions to technical failures uh, to equipment failures, a brand new Cup Series winner in Daniel Suarez, and the uh, playoff cut line continues to be a nightmare for drivers who have yet to win in 2020. But first, before we get to all of that, quick word from this uh, video sponsor. Over on Twitch, um, quality NASCAR Heat 5 truck Xfinity and Cup Series broadcast starting at $15 a race. And here's a brief uh, example of some of the commentary to expect from East Need 95 over on Twitch. 22 that are going to have the run. But seven, he's going to have nowhere to go. Now watch, they are setting themselves up here for this. Watch it. They're building the run. Here we go. Oh, the 47 going to throw the block. JD going up high. Oh, this is going to be a good finish. All right. So, yes, Daniel Suarez wins at Sonoma. So, man, big party in Mexico tonight. A lot of people are excited about this one. I am thrilled to see Suarez finally get his first win. A little bit upset because it meant that my favorite driver ended up having to be having to settle with a top five when he really is in a must win, especially now that Suarez had a win to lock himself into the playoffs. That playoff cut cut line getting tighter, but Suarez will likely be a part of that playoff scene. Um, then looking down through the rest of the top five, you had Chris Buescher ready to pounce. He had a fast car all afternoon. Uh, really never at any point really looked like he was going to be a slow driver. He was right in contention most of the afternoon. Very fast car. Um, just ultimately didn't have what it took to hold on on the long run like Suarez. Um, Michael McDowell with a great short run car. He just didn't really have the speed to contend long run at the uh, Sonoma Raceway this afternoon. If we'd gotten a late yellow, McDowell definitely could have uh, gotten the jump on Suarez and maybe Busher to try and take that win. But another restart also means we could have gotten a more boring winner. Like, for example, the other two drivers in the top five. Kevin Harvick, looking for his first win in two years, comes up short, ends up with a fifth or with a fourth place finish. Austin Sindrick comes home fifth. Um, both of those drivers, um, yeah, Sindrick has his Daytona 500 win to get him to the playoffs. Harvick still trying to get his way in. Uh, Ryan Blaney, one of the better drivers on points, having another solid point stay here, sixth place at. Sonoma, um, seventh for Chastain, eighth uh, Chase Elliott, some more good points days for some guys who are fighting for that regular season championship. Uh, William Byron just having a solid day for a poor qualifying effort that he had. Um, and Brad Keselowski getting his first top 10 of the season um, since Daytona. Like, he had a top 10 finish at the Daytona 500, but then he hadn't had another one for a long time. And really, since that, um, 100-point penalty, he's been in must-win mode, and first step to getting that win is gonna be getting some top 10s. Suarez had three or four coming into this race, um, and now he's a Cup Series winner because he just kept putting himself in position that eventually the cards were gonna fall his way, and he was fast today, that's for sure. Um, another thing I wanted to kind of quickly shout out is that in stage one, we had a uh, a brand new situation. All 10 drivers who finished in the top 10 and earned stage points were all driving for different teams, ranging from Hendrick Motorsports, Team, Pen team Penske, Colleague Racing, Spire Motorsports, and even Cody Ware driving for Rick Ware Racing. All got, um, it was the first time in NASCAR's Short history of having uh, stage points. They've had stages for six years. First time that every driver in the top ten has been driving for a completely different team. Um, but going back to the uh, finishing results, again, kind of shouting out uh, Colleague Racing earned some stage points. Justin Haley comes home 12th. 
Uh, Austin Dillon with an 11th place finish is going to have to decide soon if he thinks he can point his way to the playoffs or if he thinks he's going to need a win. If he's going to need a win, uh, especially at the road courses upcoming at Road America uh, and uh, Indianapolis, he is going to have to, you know, he's not, he's either going to have to commit to stage points or there's no, if he thinks he can get there on stage points, he needs to go full on for them. If he doesn't think he can get there on points, he should just ditch the points entirely and go purely for the end of the races. Um, Justin Haley's already kind of in that situation where he's in must-win territory. Uh, Briscoe already has a win, so it doesn't really matter. He's just trying to get you know, some more points to improve his regular season rank. Also, just trying to keep up the momentum. Uh, Eric Amarola continuing to try and uh, battle with Harvick for that final uh, spot in points. Um, it's now the battle around that cut line is now tightened up to only seven points difference um, between the two. Um, Kyle Larson finishing 15th after a, having a tire come off really early in stage three. Uh, really kind of set the whole uh, scene a little bit wacky because of the fact that it was kind of in the middle of green flag cycles a little bit. But yeah, so... <sighs> That was a pretty bad day, but he ultimately recovered to a top 15. Almendinger, he lost uh, power steering. Uh, comes home to finish 19th. Um, yeah, so that's most of the notables outside of, obviously, the Joe Gibbs Racing drivers really struggling. Zero drivers inside the top 25 for Joe Gibbs Racing. Especially in a weekend where I thought they actually had a lot of strength coming in. Uh multiple winners at this uh type of track but yeah ultimately they finished 26th 27th 30th and 31st so really bad set of uh races for them and again as i mentioned that playoff cut line uh, i'm gonna take a quick look at it um but yeah so seven points separating amarola and harvick amarola earning a lot of stage points allowing him to almost completely neutralize the points Harvick gained by beat by finishing better in the uh, final like in the race results so it ends up being a seven point difference Reddick has now dropped to 42 points out after having a mechanical issue early early in this race um he ends up being 42 out and again he and Austin Dillon are going to have to make the choice very soon if they think they can make it on uh, points or if they need to just start looking at the end of these races because it's a must win. Um, not a whole lot of spots left in that playoff. There's four. Four open spots for the uh, for non-winners right now. Um, and anyone, Eric Jones on back, I feel like should already be in uh, must win mode. I mean, 55, 93 points back. Once you get past 100 points back, you are definitely in must-win territory. So, yeah, those guys pretty much have to win. Um, Reddick and Dylan, I think, could maybe still point their way. Again, they have to make that decision soon, though, if they think they're going to be able to make, that, uh, make the points. Because if they start going for points at Road America and it costs them in the final race results and they ultimately aren't able to keep earning the good points they're gonna end up going and missing the playoffs and i think it's a realistic possibility that they can both miss the playoffs now um but yeah so <sighs> definitely a uh, close playoff cut line battle and again uh looking forward in the schedule um we have a week off srx returns this week in nascar's absence uh, I'll pro I'll definitely be watching it. Might even do a race review if you guys like. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys would like to see some uh, SRX reviews. Uh, but then in two weeks' time, NASCAR returns at Nashville Super Speedway um, for the uh, Ally 400. Then you have the month of July, which is really kind of the... After the month of July, I think we'll know pretty solidly who's in and who's out barring the final Super Speedway race at Daytona. Because you have Road America, July 3rd. 
uh, Atlanta Motor Speedway on the 10th. New Hampshire, which last year uh, pulled off a surprise winner out of its hat. Uh, Pocono, which, especially with the added shifting that we've seen, I think is going to race a lot like a road course, so you might see some of those non-traditional, maybe Chris Buescher, maybe Michael McDowell up there, yeah, can try and get that win. Then the Indianapolis road course, we saw Briscoe was really good there last year, Almendinger, um, Michael McDowell was running pretty well as well. He led some laps in that race last year, so, and those um, five races, I believe, lead us through the entire month of July, so. And then, and then after that, we'll have four races left till the playoffs, and it'll be crunch time. So, yeah, honestly, looking at this playoff battle, again, July is going to pretty much make or break it, barring a surprise result at Daytona, which is always kind of the storyline with this format, with the win and you're in, and Daytona is the regular season finale. So, I guess we will see how that ends up going, but, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a break here because of the NASCAR sk season and uh, when when it returns it will be on is it gonna be on network NBC for the first race or is it USA okay so it's network NBC for the first race but then a lot of USA races until the playoffs so yep no we've got NBC returning this week which means the NBC booth Dale jr returns Rick Allen uh, he's not as good as Mike joy but Ultimately, I'm hoping that the NBC broadcasts are better than Fox has been this year. Um, might talk about the whole Fox broadcast as a whole in another video, if you guys would like to see that at least. But outside of that, I'm um, going to start to wrap up the video. But before I do, I would like to uh, mention something that um, I am reopening my uh, Patreon page and I'm going to start doing... Um, the names over in the uh, column again. If you guys would like to get your name over in the column over there, um, if you'd like to get it, your name over there, you can uh, support the channel down at Patreon uh, at the Patreon link down in the description. But um, of course, also liking the video and subscribing is a great way to show your support for the channel as well. But until next time, I will, this has been Ryan Dyer on YouTube, and I will see you guys in the next video. Live stream, whatever you decide to do for the rest of your day. Have a great day, everybody, and goodbye. <laughs>